is community about a connection to identity? Or is it about a connection to values or things that are important? When I look at what community is, it's like, well, I don't really care so much about if people are trans, which is like not really a huge part of my identity, even though I am, but I care about, do they have integrity? Are they transparent? Do they care about the world? Are they kind? I am Michael Munson in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I am thrilled to be on the board of directors of Men Healing. Right now I'm serving as the treasurer and on the finance committee. I'm the executive director of FORGE, which is a trans anti-violence agency headquartered in Milwaukee, Wisconsin and a national scope. It emerged out of not having resources. So it's very similar to men healing in a lot of ways that, you know, there weren't resources, so let's make them. We moved from this place of doing peer-based support, getting people connected to resources, to now being an organization that is mostly about training and technical assistance. So the majority of our work is providing training to victim service providers, mental health providers, all of those folks that work or have contact with sexual assault um, survivors, with intimate partner violence survivors, with that whole spectrum of, of violence. When we look at sexual victimization in particular, there is this dominant paradigm that women are the victims, men are the perpetrators, and that's just false. So when we're working with trans folks, folks either um, were assigned female at birth and are now living in a more masculine way, or had been assigned male at birth and are now living in a more feminine sort of way. So like the paradigm of violence against women, for example, doesn't work with non-trans men who are healing, and it doesn't work for trans people of any gender vector. My partner has had dogs forever, and we hadn't had any dogs in the house for a while. We ended up with, with Quinn, who is a foster dog and abused, and just like so many folks end up with, with dogs that had traumatic histories. And she liked us, and we liked her, and she caught treats by like throwing them up in the air, and she would grab them, and I don't know, she's just delightful. Yeah, she, she actually did get filet the other day. <laughs> it, it does not happen very often, and I did eat some of it before I like cut it up for her, but, um, cause it was good, it was really good. But um, we have to do that, you know, it's just, it's like part of our trauma stuff. It's like, you know, you gotta take care of the people that are, well, people and critters in your life, so. Every time somebody says, you know, I'm so grateful that, you know, you're here or whatever, I'm like, well, we're just, I'm just listening or we're just providing space. Like these are the things that are kind of the soft sell, you know, they're not hard science, they're not complex psychological, you know, structures. They're just, how can I connect to you as a person and see you and value you as a person? And I think that that can make just a profound difference in people's lives. So I think when I look at the work that Men Healing does of truly honoring survivors wherever they're at, however they're at, um, and recognizing that healing happens in lots of different ways, those things make a difference in kind of erasing a little bit of those secondary traumas and actually getting to the root of where the, the harm was caused or where the harm is. It's possible for men to care about other men. It's possible for men to be nurturing. It's possible for men to cry. It's possible for all of these things. And it doesn't say anything about your masculinity in a negative way. It says something positive about your masculinity, that you can be real, that you can have emotions, that you can say, this is what I experienced. And you know, that's, that's just the truth of it and not feel shame or stigma with it.